there's something that I am passionate about and frustrated by. That is good people, people who I like, people who are peaceful, who just don't seem to make it financially. They always seem to be broke or can't pay their rent or they, they can't even imagine owning a home or they're looking for jobs or, or that kind of thing. I, I, I haven't completely mastered it, but I think I'm pretty good at it. I wrote a book on harsh advice for the unemployed guy. I came from absolute poverty in the Appalachian Mountains, made it to some some degree of success, owned a number of businesses, been married for almost well, a little over 20 years now. I'm I, I, a little bit squared away, I think. I think I've manned up in my life, and I've kind of figured stuff out over the last 50 years of my life. So with that, I'm I'm not trying to come off as being cocky, but... If I'm ahead of where you are and you would like to get ahead, maybe some of my thoughts are going to be worth your time. So the reason that I'm thinking of this right now is that I'm frustrated when I see people who make a lot of bad choices. They come to a fork in the road, they take the wrong fork. And then they come to another fork, they take the wrong fork. And once they are 50 steps down this path, it's really hard to get back to the right destination. What's the right destination? Maybe for you, it's not being financially comfortable. Maybe it is working until you're 87, still having to be the Kmart greeter because you need that minimum wage. Maybe that's what you think happiness is about. Maybe for you, you don't want to have a boss who tells you what to do. Uh, maybe you don't like the idea that they might not know as much as you do because you probably know a lot if you're in a position that you're looking for a lower level job. Yeah, probably not. I'm being sarcastic. So I guess I'm saying... Time for some tough love, and uh, I'm here to give it to you. So, I'm going to give you a list of 15 things, and I just came up with these this afternoon while I was driving, and uh, I'm going to share them with you. I'm probably missing some, but I'll try to go quickly. Uh, these are things that this is what I suggest you do. Now, they're not all 100%. Are there some successful people who have violated one or 14 of these? Yeah, absolutely. But overall, I would suggest you follow all 15 of these and uh, if you haven't, you'll probably notice that your life is richer in a few little ways, but it's probably not where you want it to be, and it could be because of one of these reasons. Number one, don't have any children until you have a financial plan, and part of this financial plan includes a financial plan for plan B. If you and your partner split up, what happens? Where are you each going to live? Like, have this stuff figured out before you have kids. Make sure you have the money. They are expensive. It's not just something to go out and do for kicks and giggles. Go out and do that thing that gives you kicks and giggles, but just make sure you don't end up having a kid. There are medical things that you can do. Uh, there are condoms. There are pills. There are procedures that prevent you having a kid if you don't want one. We now know what causes children. I don't care if you're 13 years old and getting curious, or if you're 25, be intelligent. If you're going to be sexually active, don't get pregnant or get anybody else pregnant. Just don't do it. Next, don't get tattoos uh, and don't use foul language. It, it's just, there's no reason to get a tattoo. I know they might look cool. Enjoy looking at pictures. Enjoy looking at your friend's tattoos. Don't spend your money on that. Don't mark your body up with those. Just don't do it. Um, foul language. Am I a prude? Pfft, no. Um, you, you use the F word every so often if you need to for effect. Uh, maybe once in a conversation, if the people aren't people who you want to impress, you know, if they're kind of undereducated, they don't read much, they haven't accomplished much in life, they're probably really going to enjoy hearing the F bomb. But if they are ahead of you in social class, in net worth, don't use it. Just and, and other foul language. Improve your vocabulary enough that you can communicate well without doing that. Brush and floss your teeth. Make sure you have good teeth. Um, if you have bad teeth, that's something that no one will ever mention to you. But it is an absolute doors closed kind of thing. If you ever go and try to get a job or you try to join a club or become friends with somebody or whatever your teeth are going to tell the story. What social class do you come from? If you have bad, gnarly, dirty, ugly teeth, 
immediately people know that you're from a lower caste. Is that right? Might you still be a really sweet person who loves puppy dogs? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm not saying you're a bad person if you have gnarly teeth. But if you want to get that job, if you want to have the person say, well, you know what, I don't really have anything right now, but I'm going to lunch with some business friends. Why don't you join me for lunch and, and you know, let's see, maybe somebody else has something. If you want that to happen, you can't be cursing. You can't have a be unshaven like I am. I'm on my walkabout now, so I have an excuse. But you can't have tattoos. You can't be unshaven. You can't have gnarly teeth. You can't have messed up hair. You've got to look sharp. You've got to look squared away. I kind of got into the next one. Don't look like crap. Um, and I just talked about that. Uh, number five, speak with a clear voice and uh, in a way that people can almost hear your smile. Like if you're talking on the phone, they can almost listen to you and just tell that you're excited and happy and cheerful and you're enunciating your words clearly. So in case they have difficulty hearing, you are a person who they can always hear well and they see you, they see or hear you smiling. And of course, when you smile, you don't smile with your mouth. You smile with your eyes right here. That's how you smile. That's how you give a genuine smile while looking someone in the eye. That's how you communicate. That's how you make a good impression. Do that. Read at least 10 nonfiction books each year. It can be on whatever you want. Maybe something, if you're interested in mechanical engineering, go for it. Um, that's if, if you're not so geeky, read something on self-help, personal development, business, finance, uh, personal training, you know, whatever. Learn you know, for kicks and giggles, find out what the books are that would prepare you to become a, a personal trainer. Well, read all of those books. Why not? Uh, read. I've got reading lists all over the place. Uh, get a hold of me and I will direct you. I'll, I'll prepare a special reading list just for you if you're going to do it. Don't waste my time. If you're just going to promise to do it, but you're not really going to do it, buzz off. Um, you're, you're not worth it uh, if you're not going to follow through. So make sure you have that that willingness to dedicate yourself and be disciplined uh, to do something. Because I genuinely want to help uh, if you really want the help and you really want to improve yourself. Be respectful on social media. Respectful and professional. Uh, don't get upset and rant and rave and drop F-bombs. Don't speak poorly about your current or previous employers or about your ex or anything like that. That's kind of white trashy stuff to do. Don't, don't do that. Um, be classy. Uh, make sure you're saying positive things about your employer uh, at least once a week on social media. It doesn't have to, you don't have to lie. Even if you dislike a lot of things, you can still get on there every so often and say, you know, I got paid again today and I'm just so grateful to be, uh, you know, be able to have Kmart in my life. I don't love all aspects of it, but overall, I'm so grateful to be able to go there and help serve the awesome people who come in to buy stuff. Okay, that's not a lie. That's positive. That is something that another employer, your future employer, is going to look at and go, wow, I like this person's attitude. They're not lambasting it. Or as I recently saw on Facebook, somebody's complaining that there's an online application and it asks the same questions that are covered in the resume. So this person's smart aleck joke was, you know, see my resume or see line one of my resume for that information. Well, that is a way to absolutely not that not get that job. If I saw somebody who made that post, they will never work for me. They will not work for me. They will not get a loan from me. If they want to start a business, I won't be their partner. I won't be their angel investor. That just completely ruins everything. And it's not it's not the the being frustrated by bureaucracy. I completely agree about that. Um, I wish that so many things weren't duplicated. In our business, we have a, a number of things that I'm just thinking, why do we have to enter this same information in four or five different places? Uh, we, we have a system when we hire or when we get a client, uh, this client, we, we jot down their notes, usually in, in Google Docs, and then we enter it into Salesforce, and then we enter it into Microsoft Calendar when we schedule it. And then we, uh, once the person has come out and, and used our service, then their uh, waiver, their their basically their ticket for, for their service, that we send to somebody in California who enters it into uh, QuickBooks. So we're just duplicating it. And it's, it's annoying and it takes so many hours and so many dollars to come up with solutions. 
And the boss probably doesn't have the time to do that. If they're a, a small business owner, it's just not worth the hundreds of hours and the extra 10 or 20 or 30 grand to do it. It's, it's just easier to keep plugging along as things are. Anyway, I don't like bureaucracy. I don't like inefficiencies. Uh, if you can have a good solution for it, bring it up in a positive way. But if you're going to create more work for the person who wants to hire you, so they now have to look back and forth because they have all the applicants on a spreadsheet. They want to be able to glance down and, and do check marks or highlight everybody who's a no, everybody who's a yes. And they're not going to go back and forth between your resume to search for the information. No. They have a system. It might not be the best system, but it's their system. Deal with it. Uh, if you want to deal with it, deal with it. If you don't, that's absolutely great. Go start your own business. Go work for somebody else who's does things exactly like you know they should be done. Fine, go do that. It's going to work out in the long run for everybody. Uh, yeah, okay, enough ranting there. Okay, read the book, High Trust Selling, uh, and then uh, make a list of the people who are important in your life. And I would say, you know, maybe not your your son or father or that kind of thing, but the the person who you get insurance from, who you buy your car insurance from, write them down. Uh, all the business contacts you have, the people who you know through church who are business owners, entrepreneurs, or or otherwise active. Uh, you know, I would say if their if their job is I don't know working at Kmart as a bottom level person, and they've been working there for the last 12 years as a bottom level person. Okay, maybe they're not in your VIP list. They're still in your list of nice people who you will treat with respect and you'll be kind to, but they're not in your important people list. And yeah, I'm sorry, that's harsh. That's maybe rude. Maybe it's a, a feelings hurter, but that's the truth. So make your list and then send the people on that list. And this is actually... Uh, uh, the next, this is number 10. Send the people that you have on this list, send them a handwritten note at least once a year. All the people on the list. And, you know, you should be doing this, you know, take five minutes, two days a week to do this, 10 minutes out of your week to write two notes. And you're going to be doing them ahead of time for Christmas so that you can send them all at the right time. Or if you're not a Christmas person, I'm not. It could be a New Year's thing. And then something half a year from then, send something else. So that these people are getting a note from you, a handwritten letter. You know how many of those they're getting? Not many. So if you're doing it, it's going to make you stand out. You're going to be on their mind as various opportunities come up. So do that little project. You'll be glad you did. Okay, don't smoke tobacco or weed or anything else uh, ever. Or if you're going to, no more than once a week or once a month. Like, okay, I get it. You're going on your trip, you, you've been a pothead your whole life, and you're going on a trip with some friends and you want to smoke some weed. Okay, fine. Um, I'm not suggesting it. I'm not condoning illegal activity. But I, like, I don't really care. Uh, but unless you have a net worth of a couple million bucks, don't do it. Wait until, uh, wait until you've been productive, you've done your thing. Just don't have that breath, that, that, that uh, smell about you so that other people can... can <laughs> smell the cigarette smoke. It just it just automatically tells anybody who has an expensive pair of shoes and a nice watch, it tells that person that you are just in another really low class. And there is nothing wrong with smoking. Jeffrey Tucker makes it cool. But I'm not really thinking of a second person who I can put on that list of who I'd say, okay, it's okay if you smoke because you're classy when you do it. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, next. Uh, participate, actively participate in at least 10 Toastmaster meetings. Uh, you'll find one at a town near you and go. And the people there are complete, uh, they're probably in the 100 to 105 IQ range. That's Chances are that's, that's where they are. Um, a little bit above average, but not much. And they are probably going to be very mainstream. The content of what they, they talk about is not going to be important. It's not about that. It's about you finding the little ticks, the little problems with how you speak. It's about watching your ums and ahs and your other little mannerisms. It's learning some real basics of public speaking or actually communicating with people in, in general. So attend 10 Toastmasters meetings. Don't own a pet. If you don't own a home, 
And if you own a, and the home you own is a, a condo and there's no yard and uh, you have a dog, don't do it. Uh, you, you've got to now waste every lunch break driving home or taking the train or whatever home. No. Like, I know dogs are cute. I love dogs. I haven't been without a dog for about 30 years now. Close. And I love dogs. Just love them. But when I was renting, I did not own a dog. It just does not make sense. I guess it's more like 20 years, actually, that I haven't been without one. Because I rented off and on up until I was, I think, 27, 28, something like that. So if you're a renter, you don't get to own pets. Just make that rule for yourself. Um, Sorry, but that's how it goes. Okay, you're not going to like this one. Don't buy a car on credit. And I know what you're thinking. Well, yeah, but I don't have a bunch of money to go out and just pay cash for one. New pickup trucks now are over 100 grand if they're nice. You don't need a new car. Um, Don't lease a car, please. Don't lease a car. I, I see people saying that, well, it just fits for their circumstance. No, go buy a clunker. If it's the best you can do, buy a clunker. Find another solution for getting to work, uh, ride a bike or whatever, make it happen until you can save up enough money to get a $500 car or a $1,000 car. And then you nurse it along while you're making your car payment in your brain. You're setting aside, I don't know what car payments are now, uh, 800 bucks a month. You're putting aside that $800 a month. And then in three months, hey, look at that. Now you can afford a $2,400 car. But wait, you have your $500 car you can trade in. So you add that to it. Now you're at about a $3,000 car. Now you have a much better car. It's probably all you need. But I'd say take another step up because having a car that breaks down really sucks and it can hurt your productivity. Um, yeah, have a, get a nicer car then. So now, now you're at your $3,000 car. Now for a year, keep saving that $800 bucks a month. Eight times 12 is approximately $7,200. Oh, and you have a $3,000 car. Trade your $3,000 car in, add it to that $7,200, and now you have a $10,000 car. A $10,000 car can be very reliable. Now you don't have to worry about breakdowns. Now you're set. Keep that car. Don't get a new one in six months. Don't think you can stop saving your $800 a month. Keep putting $800 a month into your car fund. Some of it will go for repairs. Keep putting that money in your fund, and within three or four or five years, you're going to be looking at that pile of money, and you're going to say, you know, I could afford a $30,000 car, but I don't really need it. I think I will go for a $17,000 car, though, and you'll go, you'll pay cash for it, and you'll never have a car payment. You won't be wasting money on that interest. Speaking of interest, I'm going to add something on here. I'm going to add one, and this should probably have been close to number one. Don't go into debt. Don't get a credit, don't do credit card unless you're paying it off at the end of each month. I know, I know you need that thing. The alternator broke and you need a new alternator. And I know it sucks to be poor, but don't go and get that alternator and put it on your credit card if you're not certain you can pay it off at the end of the month. Never pay credit card interest. It's ridiculously high. Don't do it. Use the credit card as a tool. Uh, We use it in our personal lives. We use it in our business and and put a bunch of money on it. That's fine. Just pay it off at the end of the month so that it's free or so that you get points out of it, uh, whatever kind of card you have. But yeah, that's that's so big. Don't get the debt thing going on. It'll mess you up. It'll mess you up. Okay. And then finally, this is kind of for the next step. This is for moving forward. The book Uh, I'm going to name a few books here, and the reason you're going to read each of these is so that you can kind of get your brain stirring, even if you've already read them, read them again. This is to get your brain swirling around and thinking about what it is that you want. If you are not truly an entrepreneur at heart, don't try to be an entrepreneur. Be an employee. It's okay. Um, A little bit more on that after I tell you the books. Books, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, next book is The Millionaire Next Door and Unscripted by MJ DeMarco. Read those three books. Um, and then after you have, then read The Cash Flow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki or something to that effect. And the fourth quadrant is investing. And I know a lot of people who have a net worth of less than a million bucks who think that they're going to be investors. No, you're not. It just, it doesn't, 
it, it's not how that works. Um, definitely not if you're under $100,000 net worth. Once you hit 100000 or if you're already there, wait until you hit the next two fifty or 500000 or $1 million or $2 million or whatever. Wait till you hit the next benchmark before you even think about being an investor, unless you're already doing really well and have plenty of extra money. That is not, just pretend it's the, the clash, fro, uh, clash, clash, cash flow trident instead of quadrant, uh, if a thing that's divided into three is a trident. Uh, think of it that way. And decide what's right for you. For me, it's being an entrepreneur and an investor. But for the first part of my life, I, well, I guess I was always an entrepreneur, but I also had day jobs. I worked for other people. And the, my thinking was, well, if I don't have a job, I have to go out and get a job. And some people have never even thought of that. They've just thought, well, what kind of, what's the newest business I'm going to start with no money? Not asking for loans, just starting a business. It can be done. I can help you. All right. That's my rant. Um, if you, I put, I'm putting this out in April of 2024. If in three or four months you haven't done all this stuff, if you haven't tried to fix your life. Now, I'm not saying if you have four kids, you need to, to get, adopt them all out or something. No, don't, don't do that. If you already have gnarly teeth, if you already are in credit card debt, if you're already using the F-bomb a bunch, if you're not much of a reader, if you're more of a a soap opera watcher, or even worse, a news watcher. If you're doing that lowbrow stuff, um, just fix yourself. Start working on fixing yourself. Get serious about fixing yourself uh, and all your little issues. I still have issues I need to fix. Get to work fixing your issues, and then you're going to be much less likely in six months or a year to have all those little poor people problems that pop up. Once you have some money, and something bad happens, like your tire blows out. It's not a big deal to go spend, I don't know, 100, 300, whatever bucks on a new tire. It's just it's part of life. You don't stress about it. You don't panic. You just you go do it. That's a way more comfortable place to be. I don't want you to be in that place where you're thinking, oh my gosh, the electricity bill was a little bit more this month than I thought, and now I don't know what to do. And then you're going, and after you buy your cigarettes and lottery tickets, you're going to McDonald's and just wondering why you don't have the money. Don't do stupid stuff. I am here to help. I'm not here to hand you money. Definitely won't do that. Um, I'll invest in your business if you have a good one. If I can make money on it and you have some collateral, I can help you with a rough outline. I can help you with a plan. Get yourself squared away. It's a hard road if you've taken yourself down 50 bad decisions, but you can still fix it. Let me help. Let's do this. Make your life better.